Welcome to NHK has been in my anime list for the longest time. Like, I'm talking years. I don't know how popular this show is, because in one sense in my anime list, it's less popular than Orange. And you don't know what Orange is, and I don't want to talk about Orange, because Orange is shit. It's less popular than Season 2 of K-On! and Season 2 of Kageguri, so I have no idea how popular NHK is. But nonetheless, it's in my anime list, and I knew that was a good show. The story follows Sato who is a hikigamori, which is basically an unemployed loser who lives off of someone, you know, whether a parent or a family member or an aunt or whatever. And Sato struggles with social anxiety. He just cannot hang out with other people. He just cannot go outside besides the occasional convenience store trip, you know. One day he meets Misaki. Misaki made it her sole goal to make Sato getting out of this hikikomori phase, making Sato a functional human being in society. Misaki is an angel, obviously helping out Sato, who is just a fucking loser, getting out of his social anxiety is such an angelic move, right, for one. But secondly, she tries her damn hardest to make Sato comfortable. Like, there will be moments where Sato is just a total dick, whether Sato just misses an appointment or Sato just, you know, tries to hit her or some shit. But Misaki just fights through. There was a moment where she dresses up as a cat girl and that was like the cutest thing and like the most like angelic thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Misaki is a great S waifu, man, and I like, will fucking stand by it. Yamazaki is Sato's neighbor who is a big weeb and and Sato and Yamazaki for like the first part of the anime want to make this like arrow game that got sold like to five people by the end of it. They have really really good chemistry, Sato and Yamazaki. Yamazaki is a straight shooter. Like he is hardworking, he is no bullshit, want to do work. The thing with Yamazaki and I find so amazing is the ending of Yamazaki and how like he gives up on his dreams and lives up with his uh, father's ranch. It was such a sad ending in so many levels. Like I understand that it's not the craziest, saddest ending in the world. You know, it's not like Yamazaki dies or anything, but the fact that Yamazaki tries her damn hardest, you know what I mean? To try to succeed and try to be a creator and you could tell that Yamazaki has talent, you know, to program and color and to draw the characters in an arrow game is insane to do just by yourself and Sato's ass can't even do a script right. That shit was just sad. To, to see him fail, to see him like tap out and just be like, you know what, I'm just gonna go to the ranch and like take care of it. It was the saddest thing in the world. The ending of the whole show is a lot more lighter. Well, obviously Misaki trying to kill himself is not the craziest and happiest moment of all time, but the growth that both of those characters, Misaki and Sato, went through, they were in a better situation before they were starting. And that is completely fine. And like, I find that a happy ending. The thing with Welcome to NHK, is that it tries to teach us the problem that is the hikikomori in Japan. Obviously, being unemployed and just mooching off of your parents isn't the greatest thing that someone can do in their life. But it tells us that it's not as easy as just, oh, get a job, you know? We could tell from Pero Pero's story, like how he struggles at even talking in person, all that jazz with his sister. It just goes to show that it's not as easy to just get a job, you fucking bum. It also talks about depression as well, how Kashiwa didn't get enough attention from Jagosaki, and that led her to be so sad to the point where she tried to kill himself. It was a really, really telling story, but what so fascinating with Welcome to NHK, every single moment that I just explained, I laughed the shit out of in the climax. And it was not in a sense of like, oh my God, this story is so stupid. And I was laughing at that. Welcome to NHK is written to the point where you can laugh at the trauma. Like when you see that Sato is getting pulled in this pyramid scheme, it's tragic because, well, you know, this guy doesn't know better, but in another way, Sato is a dumbass because he's getting falling over obvious pyramid scheme. I mean, for fuck's sake, the logo is literally a pyramid. I mean, that's, 
I should tell you that it's a pyramid scheme. Even in the ending on when Misaki is trying to kill herself and Sato is trying to convince Misaki that there's stuff to live for, Sato points at absolute nothingness and tries to kill himself trying to save her and I was laughing my ass off at Sato literally trying to kill himself. It was just I've never felt this way ever in an anime where the lines between comedy and thriller is so thin that there was moments where I just both laughed and cried at the same time. Something that I love to do in these type of videos, especially when the anime is so good, is point out the staff members. And welcome to NHK has an all-star of the staff member. Hiro Kaburagi is a director who directed and wrote Great Pretender and who directed Kimi ni Todoke, which is one of the greatest rom-coms of all time. And I noticed something when I was watching episode 4 and episode 19 that the art style sort of changed a little bit. So I looked into it, like who was the animation director of those two episodes. It was none other than our boy Shingo Natsume, the director of season 1 of One Punch Man, Sonny Boy director. This is probably one of his first gigs ever, you know. Studio Gonzo, more like Studio Bozo, am I right? Like, this studio is a nobody. Like, if you check out their shows that they did, Welcome to NHK is the only show that's above a seven. And to see this all-star staff adapting an amazing source material is sweet. 